Okay, Lars, a um, while ago asked me to, to discuss here this afternoon, and he's the boss, so I said yes. Um, but then later, as I started to see the papers come in, and I thought, boy, that was a weak moment, because what we have here is a conference on perfecting the art and the science of, I'm not going to use euphemisms here, stealing. Um, it's kind of, uh, if you watch Notre Dame tomorrow and the football, the beginning of the game, all the players are going to run out of the locker room, each touch the sign, play like a champion today. Well, optimal tax guys, they touch the sign that says, don't let taxpayer behavior betray the theft, that there's theft going on. And that's why you've been hearing so much about, let's find the zero elasticities. Where are the low elasticities? Let's find those poor suckers who we can extract resources from with the least resistance. So that's uh, what's going on, and I started to wonder what, should I stay home? Should I not show up? What am I going to do? Um, but Lars is the boss. Gary's the boss. He came here too. So what, what could they be thinking? I, I laid awake last night trying to figure that out, and I decided, well, we have a comparative advantage in measuring and complaining about this theft. Certainly on uh, my own work, I measure tax rates. Uh, that's one of the main things I do lately. So anything we can do to help expand the public sector is really good for my career and good for the Milton uh, Friedman and Gary Becker Institute. So I'm, I'm in this with enthusiasm now. So I wanted to talk about, uh, follow up on Alan's uh, paper and talk about capital taxation. I wanted to point out that there are many different types of assets in the economy. Uh, various physical assets, like in Austin's uh, dissertation, he compared different types of assets and their different tax rates, um, various locations and uses, housing and other uh, housing versus business assets would be one distinction you could make. Um, there's tangible and intangible assets. You know, the, the, the phrase rents was brought up. There's a big question of what are the rents? What are their economic function? Um, lots of differences there. Um, how about negative rents? Are you going to subsidize those? Uh, if you're taxing the positive rents, that means that somebody gets a refund when they have a negative rent. If not, then you got all kinds of tax arbitrage problems that the negative rents are taxed at one rate, positive rents at another rate. Um, so these many types of assets create a lot, of, a lot of problems, and I think there's significant, I don't think I'm alone in thinking this, there's a significant deadweight losses in our economy today from a failure to tax capital uniformly. And I'm going to show you I think some evidence of that from my own research. This would just be an example, not a trivial example, but an example. Here I've looked at uh, the rental rates, basically income generated by two different types of capital, expressed as, ratio, as a ratio to the amount of capital. Uh, the residentials in red, business, basically uh, non-residentials, basically business is in blue. Um, Maybe your eyes drawn to the fluctuations. That's not what I want to talk about today. Look at the scales. The red's measured on the red scale over on the right. The blue's measured on the blue scale over on the left. Look at the ticks. It goes from zero to eight on the right and zero to 25 on the left. The rates of income earned on these two different types of assets are very, very different. Uh, factor of three, different. And why is that? It was probably a lot of reasons, but the number one reason, and probably also the number two reason, is taxes. The residential capital is taxed much differently than non-residential capital. Basically, it escapes most kinds of business taxes. And, um, the services generated by a house are not subject to a sales tax, not subject to a corporate tax, but the services generated by a hotel room, even if we're bigger than my house, would, not, would pay both the sales tax and the corporate tax, uh, and then dividend taxes when the uh, owner of the corporation got his dividend and so on. So and in this paper that I wrote with one of our uh, students, now alumnus, um, we tried to show, one of the things we tried to show is how much taxes contribute to this gap, and it's most of the gap there is, by far most of the gap is due to taxes. So this is an example, but not the only one, of where we have different assets taxed at very different rates, and I think that creates some problems. I mean, was, would the housing boom have been the same if we weren't overbuilt 50 years before it, if we weren't overbuilt in the 70s and 80s uh, due to taxes? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. I don't know the answer, but there's problems there. Um, 
I think the easiest way to uniformly tax heterogeneous tax capital is to leave it untaxed. I, mean, I think that's the easiest one. Zero is pretty easy to recognize, um, easy to enforce, um, and I think that's a major reason. Um, wasn't brought up today, but in thinking about taxing capital, zero, uh, my, my attention is drawn to zero there. The other part that I think is left out, and it, and it relates to this heterogeneous types of capital, um, We've talked about kind of taxes narrowly defined. We also got into benefits this morning, which can be implicit taxes. But there's the, the third weapon of, of the thieves, if you will, um, and that's regulation. And that's just to take, take stuff, um, not through the budget, not having a budget item for it, but just to force people. Uh, we do that in Chicago. We're going to build uh, the Paul basketball stadium, and we're going to take people's property who happen to live near there. Um, that's taking is, is happens. Or you might not take it outright and you say, go ahead, keep it, but we're gonna tell you how to, how to use that property. Um, you have to grow certain kind of plants and make homes for certain kinds of birds or whatever, and that would be another way of, of taxing. Um, and assets in particular, especially land and land, uh, improvements in land are subject to this kind of tax as well, and this is an important tax. Um, it's not even either. Um, and I think it needs to fit into the overall uh, picture. I don't know how well the profession is ready to deliver on putting together the whole picture, but it's got to be part of the uh, entire picture of understanding uh, what's going on with capital and taxes. Okay, thank you.